Hello and welcome to another vlog in our summertime favourite series. In the vlog today we'll be looking at an individual from the Bible who I think isn't always focused on and that is Mordecai. And we read all about Mordecai in the book of Esther. Now I absolutely love the book of Esther. It is a narrative about bravery and fighting for what is right. And often when we discuss bravery within this narrative, we discuss the bravery and the values that Esther holds, which makes sense because the narrative follows her and her actions. But I think that sometimes the actions and the values of Mordecai can be overlooked. And if we do this, we're overlooking an individual who places God and his people first. So for those of us who aren't maybe as familiar with who Mordecai is, here is a little whistle-stop tour of his life. Mordecai was a relative of Esther's and he adopted Esther when she was very, very young and raised her as if she was his own daughter. And then later on, we discover that Mordecai discovers a plot against the king's life and he foils it and informs the king. And this is something that the king later remembers when there is a decree from Haman, a man who holds the highest position in the court. And this decree states that um, this decree states that all Jewish exiles will be killed. Now, this would have included both Mordecai and Esther, who was queen by now at this point. And this is a decree that was written after Mordecai refused to bow down to anyone and anything other than God. And it was after this degree, decree that Mordecai told Esther that she must approach the king to intervene and to save God's people. But this came with the risk, as by doing this, Esther was risking her own life. And it's this part of the story that I'd like to look at today. And in particular, a phrase that is often quoted whenever discussing the book of Esther or the bravery of Esther. Esther reports to Mordecai that unless she is invited to see the king, she will be killed if she approaches him to inform him of the plans of the decree. And Mordecai responds like this in chapter four, verses 13 and 14. He sent back this answer, do not think that because you are in the king's house, you alone of all the Jews will escape. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance from, for the Jews will arise from another place, but you and your father's family will perish. And who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. Or as the Good News Version states, yet yeah, who knows Maybe it was for a time like this that you have been made queen. When discussing these words, maybe you were made for such a time as this, we often discuss Esther and her response and her responsibility, but don't always acknowledge the importance that Mordecai actually said this. And secondly, we don't always acknowledge the example that Mordecai sets by saying this. Mordecai here sets a fantastic example of what it means to trust in God. Esther is in a really difficult situation and has been blinded by her fear and along comes Mordecai with words of wisdom and words of comfort to say, listen, maybe God put you where you are so you can speak of him and for him and for his people. I don't know what Esther first thought when she heard these words, but I can't help but feeling a real sense of comfort from them and feel encouraged to be more like Mordecai. When we're facing those difficult situations or we're facing situations that we didn't think would happen because we were following what God had told us to do, maybe we need to turn away from the fear and like Mordecai, remember to trust in God. 
and think maybe we place in this situation to speak of God and to share his good news. I also think we get another great example from Mordecai from this very short but very powerful phrase and that it's sometimes we need to be prodded to see where God is in a situation because he's always there but sometimes we have our blinkers on. Mordecai shows us why it is so important to have good people who are strong in their faith around us to support us. For those times when we lose our focus because of fear, because of life's distractions, because of worry. I know that I have some amazing people in my life who will turn to me and say something that brings that focus back to God. To remind me that he is there and reminds me to keep that focus. I can remember being in one situation and I was trying to decide something and I was coming up up with lots of different thoughts and I was creating a million ways this thing could go wrong and a friend turned to me and said have you prayed about it and that's what I needed I needed to be prodded to turn that focus back onto God And that's why it's important for us to live life and to share our lives with other people. And it is equally important to stop and be that for someone else. For us not only to be encouraged to also, but to also be an encourager. To be able to support others and help them when they lose that focus. So I'd like to end today's vlog by saying that my prayer for all of us today is to be encouraged and to be an encourager. Shall we pray? Father God, thank you for the example of Mordecai. Help us to be more like him, to trust in you always, to find you in those situations and encourage those around us to do the same. Amen. I hope you have a lovely day, whatever you're doing, and we will see you over the weekend. Bye.